With a look at the volleyball rules for Florida State University Intramural Sports, I'm Director of Intramural Sports, David Peters. We're going to walk you through volleyball. If you're not familiar, it is volleyball inside a racquetball court. Quite a fun game for three and four person teams. We have it here at Florida State. We'll tell you how to play coming up in this presentation. Facility information is first, followed by player check-in. The sport rules will detail how you play volleyball. Starts at about the three minute mark if you need to fast forward in the video. League information after that. Know that everything we do here in intramural sports, including volleyball, is part of our seven principles, including involvement, participation, fair play, sportsmanship, and safety. And we'll touch on some of those coming up in this presentation. Where to go to play volleyball? Well, I mentioned we need racquetball courts. And on campus at Florida State, those are in the Leach Recreation Center. So come on over to Leach. It's right next door to Tully Gym. No alcohol, no tobacco, no pets, uh, no gum are allowed in the Leach Center. So make sure you just leave all of that at home. And you have to be able to get in the Leach Center to play volleyball with us. So all students are members, absolutely free. So you'll just need your ID to get in the front gate. Otherwise, faculty and staff need to be Leach members or purchase a guest pass for the day to play in our volleyball league. Must have your current valid FSU card to check in with our intramural supervisors, too. So once you've swiped in at the front gate of Leach, make sure you hold on your card and come on down to the glass racquetball courts located there in the atrium. Our intramural supervisor will get you checked in for the game with your card. So hold on until that time. For volleyball in particular, each participant is only allowed on one team, so open or co-rec. If there's a change to those rules, we'll alert our team captains, and players may not change teams once they've signed in for a team for the season. So once you've got that one volleyball team, that's yours until we start a brand new season and you can change teams for that season. For more information about player eligibility or restricted players, the forgotten ID pass, in case you happen to forget, forfeits, defaults, and related fines, and the regular season and playoff formats, it's all online as part of our Team Captains podcast. You can see that online at campusrec.fsu.edu. And sportsmanship is very important to us across all the sports within intramural sports. Not usually a problem in volleyball, but again, it's still a top priority. So make sure you're keeping your ratings high and sportsmanship uh, in a positive way. For more information about sportsmanship, you can view our podcast or view the guidelines. They're both available separately and on our website at campusrec.fsu.edu. All right, let's get into the volleyball rules now. Team composition for Open League, it's three on three. You do need all three players to start a game, so two players at match time results in a default, and one or less is a costly forfeit. We don't want that to happen, so make sure you have at least uh, three to actually play the game. If you get two there, you won't be able to play, but at least it'll go down as a default and won't be costly like a forfeit. In co-rec, it is four on four, and the legal combinations in co-rec are two males and two females, or you can have two of one gender and one of the other, so two and one, or one and two. Still need three players here in co-rec as well, so you could play three on four in co-rec. Three players required to start, two at match time as a default, one or less is a forfeit. We provide all the equipment in volleyball, so no need to worry about that. Uh, in fact, it's available at the front desk of the Leach Center if you want to check some out on a weekend, maybe get a practice session in, set up a court uh, for yourself. You also need the appropriate running or court shoes within our racquetball courts. Jewelry is not allowed uh, by any participant, and headwear is also prohibited as part of volleyball. And you'll see coming up in just a picture that the volleyball itself is kind of an oversized racquetball. It's blue like a racquetball, but about the size of a volleyball. And... Uh, It'll make sense when you, you pick it up at the front desk, you, you'll see what we mean when you're out there on the court playing some volleyball. How do we score volleyball? Well, much like volleyball, matches are best two out of three games. We do use standard volleyball scoring as opposed to rally scoring for volleyball. So you only score when you are serving, otherwise it's a side out uh, if the opponent is serving and, and you uh, score on that play. No points, just a side out. And otherwise, uh, you'll have to serve to score. All games are to 15 points, must win by two. There's a cap of 17 points on games one and two. So if we get to the score of 16-16, the next team that scores a point and reaches 17 will win those games. But on the third and final game, it's unlimited. You must win by two. And it could be 31-29, for example, in that last game, the deciding third game. Substitutions for volleyball, we don't do that in-game, instead only between games. So if you bring some extra players, that's fine, but they'll want to just wait, and then after game one, they can sub in for game two. If you have an injured player, we have a, a procedure for that. You can either play down while that injured player gets some treatment or just takes a moment to maybe walk it off, uh, or you can sub in a player, but if you sub in someone uh, mid-match or mid-game, uh, the an injured player cannot return for the entire match. They're essentially out uh, for the rest of that match. General match play, well, it's three contacts on a side, just like regular volleyball, not including that unsuccessful block. So other general volleyball rules apply, such as lifts and reaching over the net. All of that's not permitted in volleyball either. There's no kicking of the ball or contacting the ball uh, intentionally with the leg, and there's no climbing of the walls, no scaling the wall, for example, in attempt to block an attack or even to attack the ball. All right, let's take a look at the court and what's legal on your side of the net versus what is not legal uh, when you hit the ball over the net. 
uh, it's a standard racquetball court, as I mentioned, and we've just uh, we've got a volleyball net here, uh, right along the mid middle point of the court. So we have two teams, one on each side. Uh, most of our photos here have less than the three players, so it's a little bit more crowded. We have full teams out there, but this is uh, kind of the diagrams we have and the photos we have to help you learn how to play. On your side, you can contact the wall, the back wall, any of the side walls. They're all in play, so you can bounce the ball after a dig. You can hit it off the side wall. You can set it off a side wall. Again, as long as you are playing it to a teammate. So balls can be play off multiple walls and the ceiling on your side of the court as long as another teammate touches the ball before it goes over. So here's that ceiling on your side. Again, the ceiling is in play on your side as long as you touch the ball again before it goes over to the other side. So there are going to be those opportunities where perhaps there's a powerful attack that comes across and a dig goes straight up to the ceiling. It usually comes straight back down pretty quickly, but you can still have an opportunity to play that ball and continue with your three contacts to get it back over. But most of the time, we're focused on playing the ball over the net. And how does that happen? Well, uh, you can play it directly over, just like you would in a regular volleyball match. No need to use a wall. Using walls are not required. But if you do, here are a couple of rules that you need to keep in mind. The offense can play the ball off a single side wall and over the net at any time. So we have the ball on the far side in this particular picture. And you can take it off a side wall and right on over. That's a legal play. And the other team can, again, go ahead and try to dig that right off the wall and continue play. Or if it hits the ground, uh, that'll be good for a score. The other side wall is fine too, so near side and over would be fine. And with some talent, uh, the back wall and over is also legal. Again, this is one wall, so one side wall or the back wall on your side over the net uh, is legal. Uh, but there are several things that are not legal when you start hitting these walls. But you'll know, as you can already tell, that really the walls are the key part of the strategy here. So you're playing it around the blockers. You can see in this particular diagram, just a quick hit off the side wall there and over is certainly a very popular play in volleyball. All right, what is not legal? Well, when you're hitting the ball over the net, in this particular diagram, the ball is on the near side and we're aiming for the far side. You may not hit the back wall. So any attack that hits the back wall before touching an opponent is considered out uh, and the, the play is dead immediately. So if you attack it too hard and it goes right off the back net, that is out. That also applies for the serve. If you hit it off a side wall in this particular diagram and then it still hits the back wall before it comes down, again, out. That, that back wall on the far side when you're hitting it over, always out if the ball hits that before it touches one of your opponents. You also cannot hit uh, two side walls or any combination of walls and hit it over. I mentioned earlier one wall is fine, but more than one wall is not fine, and that's considered out. So uh, we like to call it the zigzag formation here. Off both side walls, this is considered out, and the play is over. Also, uh, off the back wall and then a side wall would also be considered out as well. So again, this is more than one wall and that makes it out of play. I mentioned earlier that if you can keep the ball on your side after hitting the ceiling, that's okay. But when you hit it off the ceiling and it goes over, that is also considered out. So you cannot do that A formation right off the, uh, the roof, uh, the ceiling, and then back over the other side. That would be considered out, and the ball is dead. And all of these, once the ball is dead, it's regardless of the player, or the opponent plays the ball after that point. There are a couple of areas we have on our court that sometimes can be a little bit tricky. Sometimes our net doesn't reach all the way across the, the, uh, the court. And so a couple of holes do exist. You can see one on the, uh, the left side, another one here on the right side. If you happen to put the ball through there on attacks one or two, then that is considered a replay. We'll just stop the play and we'll reserve that point as a replay. If it's on attack number three or hit number three, in that case, the ball is considered out because the net would have been there and would have stopped it anyway. So uh, we will just rule that as the point being over. On the service rotation, the rotation is clockwise prior to a team serve. The server for the offense and the previous server for the defense are considered back row players and they cannot attempt to spike or block a ball at the net. So uh, that does limit the number of folks up there at the front for your attacking or blocking players. Again, you must have a back row player. And when you're playing three on three in uh, for both open and if you're playing three on four in co-rec, know that you will always have a back row player. So therefore, you only have two players who can block or attack the ball at the net. What about the serve? Well, the serve occurs back near the, the back wall, again, within about three feet or so, as long as you're standing near that wall. You don't have to be so close to in, interfere with your serve. But again, towards the back is about where the service area is. And the service is just like any other attack. It can hit a side wall uh, and go over. Uh, that would absolutely be fine. But serves cannot be blocked or attacked. They just need to be uh, played as a regular uh, contact on the other side. A quick review, when on your side of the net, all walls and the ceiling are in when playing to a teammate, but when you're playing the ball over the net, as I mentioned, off one side wall is okay, that back wall is always out, and off more than one side wall or off the ceiling is also out. That's it for volleyball. 
for more information, certainly visit our website. And also you'll visit our website to take the team captain's exam. You want to finalize your team registration by taking that exam and passing it successfully by the deadline that's listed online. For changes to your registration, make sure you let us know by email or in person in the, the uh, Intramural Sports Office in 1035 Tele Gym. For more information about our season, including the team captain's guide, regular season schedules, playoffs, and also the complete sport rules as I mentioned, campusrec.fsu.edu is our website for that information. And teams, regardless of record, but with the required sports news matter, all those teams will make it into our playoffs. Hey, that's it. With questions, give us a call, 850-644-2430, or you can email us from our website. Again, that's campusrec.fsu.edu. With a look at the volleyball rules, I'm Director of Intramural Sports, David Peters. Good luck and have fun this Intramural Sports season. Thank you.